Tonight, local bar closes for refurbishment, but it's not just the decor that's changing. And one man is raising money for a new charity. We also take a look at today's top trending. This is Flash News. A local bar closes for refurbishment as staff face a mass restructure. I went there earlier today to check out the local opinion. It's all change in Banbury as what was once the Fleur has become the Cherwell. I came to see the local opinion. Uh, well, when it was the Fleur, because it was all Weatherspoon, it was fairly quite cheap, like on a night out and stuff. Whereas now, because it's the Cherwell, it might be a bit more expensive. Well, as a former employee, I was quite annoyed when I was told that I wouldn't be working there anymore because when we were all told about this change, we, we were all promised that our jobs would be safe and then come the time for the change, I was sacked. I think being there, it's kind of like going to put a strain on the money coming in because everyone's going to get that side of town and not down this side of town. There already are quite a few pubs in Banbury, so I don't know what it's going to bring to it that's, that's new and different and is it going to survive if it's doing that? Uh, prices have gone up a little bit since it was a Weatherspoons pub, but uh, uh, not excessively. I think, I think it's still one of the cheaper places in Banbury and uh, still offers good value for money. But how will this affect Banbury? Only time will tell. Back to the studio. We now go live to Jack Parker, co-owner of the Weatherspoons Group. Jack, thank you for joining us here today. Thanks for having me. You decided to sell the bar, formerly known as the Fleur, to another chain after the workforce retaliated over a dispute of low pay. How do you respond to that? Well, Oliver, we decided that a change of premises would be best for business, especially with the recent issues with staff. How do you feel that you've now contributed to the rise of unemployment in the Oxfordshire area? Well, the decision to sell our old premises was a decision made by our board of directors and greenlit by all co-owners, including myself. And I believe it was the right decision. Hmm. In a world riddled by Donald Trump and Brexit, how are you feeling about losing one of your flagship bars? Well, I would say optimistic. I mean, we do have many others. People like Sean, there in my report, left bemused by the alleged backhanded actions taken by your company, relieving him and many others of their duties after they'd been told that a job had been secured. How would you respond to that? Uh, our employees were offered the opportunity to transfer to one of our other establishments. However, most were unwilling due to the distance from their original place of work. We're running out of time, I'm afraid, but thank you for your time. No problem, Oliver. Have a nice day. Today's top trending. Broadchurch, the hit ITV drama, is only three episodes away from its final episode, and fans are still scrambling to find out who the rapist is. Showrunner Chris Chibnall has said it will be a huge surprise, and no one will tell right until the end. Next up is The Voice, as it's reached its finale on the BBC. Sir Tom Jones, the judge, accidentally swore during the live footage, causing an outrage online. Not only that, there was a photobomb as someone ran onto the stage and had to be removed. The infamous cat kicker from Liverpool has been caught after he sent a Tommy cat flying over his garden wall. Kenneth Kennison, aged 23, has been arrested on 15 accounts of animal cruelty. The agent to the comedy duo Nick and Dean have confirmed that both will be performing in one last movie together. The film, titled R.I.P. Nick and Dean, will air in 2020. The website Club Penguin finally closed its site after 12 years as people on social media have been sharing memories of the site. And April 1st has been and gone and many people are posting various jokes and tricks online. You can view our top favourite at our website flashnews.com. The adult animated show Rick and Morty made a surprise return last night when it replaced a previous repeat of one of the other shows. Oxford have been crowned the winner of this year's boat race after a very close match against rivals Cambridge. It's been announced that the new Doctor Who companion, Bill Botts, as played by Pearl Mackey, will be gay. Mackey said, it's great to see this. This is an amazing thing for the 21st century. And finally, the TV classic Teletubbies turns 20 years old today, as celebrations have begun. The show, which was rebooted last year, will get a mer new merchandise, a feature film, and various appearances in shopping centres around the country. 
Now, we're looking at something great here, a new charity all about script writing. Script writer Mark Edwards has recently set up a new charity, purely devoted to helping young and upcoming script writers gain the proper training and skills required to enter the industry. Mark, 35, has always had a passion for writing and making up stories since he was a young boy. We sat down with him to talk about his motives behind the launch of the charity. So Mark, what made you decide to start this charity up? Well, I always felt there was a big gap between what we do in education and what we do in industry in regards to uh, script writing. So I really felt there was a, a niche that needed to be filled to help people move from one area to another. It's a very, very difficult world to get work in. Generally speaking, in the industry, people tend to employ people they've employed before. And so for someone trying to break in, it can be very, very difficult. So I felt what was needed was a charity that could really bridge that gap and could enable people uh, to get to know people from the industry outside of the context of an educational institute. Do you think your own love of storytelling has influenced this decision? Yes, definitely. I, from a very young age, I was obsessed with writing stories, um, short stories, poems. Um, it wasn't until later in life that I started working on scripts. Uh, but when I realised that script writing is the art of minimalism, the art of writing less on a page than writing more, um, that's when I started to really become obsessed with it as an art form. Uh, and I found that it was, in some ways, because of that, easier to perhaps teach uh, as a skill. Um, because people tend to perhaps struggle with English and with, and with poetry because they have to write in certain forms, they have to write in certain structures. They do, to some degree, uh, need to keep to the format as well in script writing, but the art of, of boiling it down to what can be heard and what can be seen is something that I really, really enjoy, and I think a lot of hope, lot, hopefully a lot of the people that I deal with enjoy that process as well, and it becomes a real skill by the time they, they finish with our charity and move into the real world. When it comes to script writing, were you ever influenced by anyone growing up? Yes, uh, I think everyone involved in script writing will, will have to give a nod to Robert Town and the excellent script that he wrote for Chinatown. Uh, I think in terms of our charity and what we were trying to achieve, uh, Robert McKee was a great inspiration to me and, uh, and he, the series of lectures that he's given uh, over the past few decades, um, trying to encourage people uh, to develop their script writing skills more, to try and uh, make sure they're really thinking carefully about what they put on the page, how they frame it. Um, I suppose I'm also very influenced by uh, people in the industry that haven't necessarily been trained as script writers but have gravitated towards that area. So people like Stanley Kubrick who um, was a photographer but ended up being a director uh, and very much was involved in every script writing process on, on all of his films, even though he would never call himself a script writer. How did you come up with the name Pounds for Pages? Uh, Pounds for Pages, well, it was a, a long deliberation, a long process of going through many different names, uh, most of which were rejected because they were ridiculous or they were too long or too complicated or they didn't really get across what we were trying to do. Um, obviously, this is a charity, but what we're trying to get across to our, our clientele, both from the industry and the people that are, are coming to join us and coming to learn script writing, is that this is an area where you can actually earn money. If you become good enough, uh, this can be your profession, not just a hobby, but the, how you earn your money. Uh, so we decided, you know, pounds for pages really summed that up in a nice, neat way, and it looks really good on our website. And whilst we're here, I have to ask, have you ever been considering writing something for Marvel's new big franchise, Mr. Tech? Well, um, I, was, I, I would be interested. I haven't been approached yet um, by anyone, but um, yes, I, I certainly have enjoyed uh, Marvel franchise uh, film and TV releases. Uh, I particularly love what they've done with their, their TV releases in recent times, the Daredevil, um, the Jessica Jones, uh, the Luke Cage type programs have all, I think, been exceptional. And, and for me, uh, slightly a cut above the Warner Brothers releases so far. Uh, and that's o o odd because when I was a kid reading comics, it was always the Warner Brothers stuff I liked more. But now, as an adult, I suppose it's, it's, I'm gravitating more towards the Marvel world. So an opportunity to work with them would be fantastic, but I haven't got the call yet. 
Thank you for talking with us today, Mark. Thank you very much. It's been an honour. So far, Mark has raised over £900 since his initial startup fundraiser, with the total increasing as we speak. For now, Mark works on his own scripts and building the charity. Maybe we'll see a collaboration with him and our very own David Ingram for a feature film someday. We'll have to wait and see. Oliver Marvin, Flash News, Banbury. And now we go over to Josh Cuthbert with this week's sports. Hello and welcome to this week's sports review. In football, Newford Town suffered a loss against Arsenal when playing away at the Emirates Stadium last Tuesday. Newford captain Luigi Rigoletti claimed, We definitely could have played a lot better, but we won't let it affect us. It's simply off the record. In rugby, Carl Foxen has retired for playing for England professionally due to an injury to his pelvis. He will be leaving after the Six Nations match against France next month. England captain Carl Rayner said, We wish him the best of luck. Foxham will now coach at his local team. And finally, the once famous Banbury women's netball team is to reform after 12 years. They will be playing against Cockfoster in the first of 15 matches. Captain Izzy Black told us they were busy preparing and can't wait to bring back the spirit of Banbury. And that's all we've got time for this week and David has the entertainment news. Hello, in today's entertainment news, Marvel and DC have both dropped big bombs for their newest films. First official images have been released for Marvel's Mr. Tech, coming in 2019. The first promo image shows the hero's official costume based around his appearance in the original television shorts that the movie is based on. DC also released the first trailer for this year's Justice League, starring Ben Affleck, Gal Gadot, Jason Momoa, Ray Fisher and Ezra Miller. The film is due to be released November 2017. ITV have had major problems when they released their new quiz show Dumbstruck yesterday. The whole show was released without audio. ITV apologised for the mistake via their social media where they claimed the mistake was due to a broadcasting issue during the showing and has been fixed for tonight's repeat. Filmmaker Lewis Coles has announced his latest documentary Candid Camera New York will be released on BBC One on the 26th of May. And finally, Beauty and the Beast has now been released in the UK and left critics with mixed reviews. Jessica Parker of Film and TV Mag said, It was amazing. It was my favourite movie as a child and it's just as great now. Sarah Taylor, editor for TheMovieReview.com said, The film was slow to start with but worked well eventually. And Joshua Smith from HND Movies magazine said, While the movie was fun and interesting, Emma Watson fails to impress as Belle. Now over to Lewis with this week's weather. Over to you, Lewis. This week's weather, Monday starts with lows of 6 degrees centigrade, working its way up to the evening with highs of 14 degrees. Plenty of sunshine, but with some clouds during the night. Tuesday is another warm day, starting with lows of 7 degrees, working its way to highs of 14 again. But not as much sun this time, as there will be a thick level of cloud cover. Wednesday is going to be a warm day with lows of 11 and highs of 15. But there will be quite a lot of clouds, clouds again with a small risk of rain in the night. Thursday will start wet but very warm around 7am, brightening up during the day reaching highs of 16, highest this week. Friday is going to be rainy throughout the day, only reaching highs of 12 to 13 degrees. The sun will be hidden by a deep cloud cover and the rain. More rain is due for Saturday though, getting heavier throughout the day, with highs of 13, while Sunday see some improvements being dry yet quite cold, only reaching highs of 11. Thank you. Back to you in the studio, Oliver. Finally, to send us off, Twitter user MusicMan69 sent us this amateur video of what seems to be two aliens. The small video shows two beings communicating, then realising they were being watched and running away. If you have any videos like this, please share them with us at olivermarvin at flashnews.com. That's it for tonight. I've been Oliver Marvin, and this has been Flash News. Good night.